AFTV, um, what did you make of it then? It was a bit of a disappointing game today, wasn't it? Where do you start? Where, absolutely, where do you start? You, you can't go to a team like that and play three at the back, two in midfield that don't progress and don't want to move the ball forward. Uh, the three in the back are quite happy to circulate, but none of them actually want to step into midfield and try and make things happen. By doing that, it takes a little bit of pressure off Maitland Niles, a little bit of pressure off Tierney, gets them five yards, ten yards higher up the pitch. When you think about how Wolves played against us on Saturday, the width that they played, they played exactly the same formation, but they knew exactly what they were doing. They were drilled, they, everyone had a role, everyone had their responsibilities. I'm not sure anyone in the team understands their roles and responsibilities. And that's a struggle after two years um, or a year and a half. Because um, when you look at what Rodgers has done at Leicester in the period that he's been there, when you look at what Lampard's done in the period that he's been there, even if you go further down the league and you look in the championship and you look at Bielsa and what he's done in the time that he's been there, he's been there the same time period. Mm. These guys have all got into a club and they've stamped their mark. You know, and people know what to expect when they come up and play them. I know they're going to be in on Friday and they're going to be spending, they're going to be spending a whole session working on how to stop Jamie Vardy on the counter-attack. Nothing about how we play as a team, nothing about how we go out and stamp our authority. It's going to be, we're going to be going in there, going, going away to Leicester, hoping that we get a point. And we'll be lucky if we get one. So you, get one. it seems like you're sort of putting the blame fairly squarely at the door of the manager. Absolutely. For me, the players are playing like they don't want to see video footage of their own mistakes. So it's, I'll get the ball and I'll lay it off to you and then if you make a mistake, I ain't going to see it on video footage because obviously when he came in, we kept hearing about how much video footage he puts together of all the players and all, and all that sort of stuff. And they're playing within themselves. There's absolutely no one out there. I mean, Guendouzi came on, tried to do it a bit in the second half. Just go out and just, you know, have a bit about you and just go out and just play. You know, like, you can't get the ball and have the three centre-backs just circulating and circulating it, playing it into the midfield, getting the ball back, circulating, circulating, circulating. Not one person trying to play a penetrative pass. Um, Martinelli's on the halfway line trying to make runs making the movements coming short trying to do all the right things and he's just he's just doing doggies on the half, on the halfway line really yeah, I was watching the game even when Lacazette came out I don't think he, he hardly no. touched the ball did he? No um, like I said you can't play with the formation that we played with three at the back and the two wing backs and they don't actually look to get into wide areas and make, make things happen um, but some of that comes from the back four some of that comes from you know Martinez sometimes just getting the ball and not always just wanting to roll it out to the centre of. Chambers is he, on, is he on, under instruction that, to that, do that? And that might be it. But, you know, mm. Chambers has got the ability, Holding's got the ability to step into midfield and take the game to the opposition. But Big game at the weekend. I mean, this would have been nice to win this, but not the end of the world. Well, they had 10 points, still likely to go through fairly comfortably in this. But <laughs> the one on Saturday now, that's a different... He needs to win that, doesn't he? What's worrying is that you look at the league table and go, if we don't win that, Brighton are on our, you know, Brighton might overtake us. Brighton? Yeah, they're, they're like two or three, but, you know, but, but realistically, and, 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 in, and in fact, I mentioned a few managers earlier, but, you know, Graham Potter's gone in there and he ain't that far off where, off, off where we are. And, you, and you, you're sitting there, you, you're just baffling. It's just baffling. It's absolutely baffling. I know a few people mentioned about Xhaka earlier and, and that came up. It, it's almost like the manager just doesn't have enough about him to just make a decision and just stick with it. You cannot come to a team like this and play three at the back and go, we just, we'll, we'll be happy to come away with a point. Cannot do, you, do you think that's a lot of the problem with him is that he is happy to come away with a point? He, he, he has got that mindset that, and maybe us as Arsenal fans over the years under Arsene Wenger, Arsene Wenger was never really happy with a point. He went everywhere to win. Sometimes that was a bit to the detriment. But we've become used to that. We've become used to being on the front foot all the time. Unai Emery's not really that guy, is no, he? And that was a challenge for me. Because what I think when, when someone else came in, what I didn't want to do was go away to Anfield and get spanked five and six. Go away to City, get spanked five and six. Go away to Chelsea, get spanked five and six. How we've gone to Anfield a couple of weeks ago, scored five and still not come away with it, just doesn't, you know, it's just mm. not, it's, it's just not a done thing. Uh, you know, we were told when he came over that he was a pragmatic sort of manager. He tried to convince us that he wasn't hasn't done a very good job of that. Um, you know, he made a hard job of the French League with PSG, mm. you know, and that should tell you, you know, what we've kind of got ourselves in for. For me, the sooner he goes, the better. Um, and that's not to be disrespectful to him. Um, I think the players would benefit. Um, but, you know, but there has to be a bit of long-term succession planning and we can't, be a situ we can't find ourselves in a situation like United did where you're just cycling through managers, cycling through managers, cycling through managers, no long-term progression. You know, the young boys are coming through, Willock's coming through, Saka's coming through, Martinelli's coming through. You've got a couple of boys beneath them. 
they need to come into the right environment. And at the minute, the you know the environment is is toxic, and it's not the right environment for them to be coming into and looking to and looking to progress and be legends for Arsenal.